Hi, my normies and non-normies. How's it going? I really do hope that everything is going good with y'all. And I hope that everyone is in a better place than they were the last time. <coughs> or just in a better place in general. Um, gonna say sorry for the airplane noise in the background. It's the AC. Every time I test the microphone just to make sure that I'm not sounding as low as I do when it ends up at the end. And I don't know why. And I always test my mics couple of times before I start recording so I don't sound so low and it's not like I move the computer or anything I just feel like my USB port to the mic is loose but whatever um I can't do nothing about the AC in the background it bothers me I don't know if it bothers any of you but it bothers me um this part of that OCD piece because you don't hear no noise in the background of anybody else's video when you watch them so why is there one in the background of mine Cause the AC's right behind me. See, watch. Right there. See the AC? The AC's right there. Like, so all the noise is the most in here. And like, even when the kids talk to me from the other room, I have to be like, huh? I can only get bits and pieces. So I can only imagine when I'm doing these recordings or when I'm trying to do a podcast or um anything else that I'm talking on how annoying this can probably sound and it may not bother you guys on the other end but it bothers me as a content creator it bothers me because you guys should be able to you know enjoy my videos or hear me whatever without having to have uh the airplane in the background but um i've been at my a I've actually been focused on getting my health and life coach certification um, with one of the programs that I'm with and then getting my life coach certification with another program that I was with, that I'm with. And I've been really just trying to find uh, volunteers to sign up for the free coaching sessions because I have to have a certain amount for my certification. Um, I completed one. I'm so proud of myself. I'm actually certified as of, what was it, two days ago, I think it was, or three days ago, um, as a life coach uh, with the Life Coach Institute. I am still taking the Health and Life Coach certification with Health, um, what is it, Health, what is it? HCI, Health Coach Institute. That's what it is. Their program is a little more intensive so it takes a little bit longer to work their program they have a lot more higher requirements than the first one that I completed so I have to find <coughs> people and I've talked about this before that are willing to sign up for a free coaching session and no one really signs up and it's frustrating and annoying because I need this for my certification like I'm out here trying to find a way to make income from my family without having to rely on anybody I'm already on here <coughs> I'm already on here talking to you guys um, letting y'all in my home and my life and my mind <coughs> so it only made but sense to me to you know if I'm trying to motivate and inspire and help then I should get training to do and do it you know what I'm saying uh, with the correct techniques you know even though I do it but I've always done it my whole life technically because after taking these trainings I'm like but whenever my family and my friends used to vent with me <coughs> it was pretty much what I do anyways so I guess you can kind of say I've always been a coach um to a certain extent so now I just got certified for it and I want to get as much practice as possible and I need to complete certification for the other program so I need to have a certain amount of sessions done to get my certification and I'm starting this ahead of time because 
I don't want it to get down the line when I'm supposed to be done and I'm not because people just can't support me and what I'm trying to do. Now, <laughs> sorry y'all, but I gotta breathe. And I can't do that if I'm trying to hold boogers from going down my throat. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies. Um, where's my hand sanitizer? There we go. <sighs> like, we live in a motel. We still can't find transportation to buy. And then come to find out because of what the apartment did about putting the rent on my credit even though it's not supposed to be there because the judge threw it out and then having the repo from right before I gave birth to Lyrical when I had to turn back the car into Kia I can't get a loan I can't get a loan to get another car financed So I'm trying to get, uh, how can I put it, I'm trying to find means of how to get on our feet. I mean it's clear that the GoFundMe page didn't get anything. It's clear that those that we know and don't know that are supposed to be, that support random people and random things just for some particular reason just don't support me and, my, and our family and our channel. Um, or just don't support us or just say that they do but in reality they don't um, I've always been one to not rely on other people and then for this situation I have to rely on other people because if I don't how am I supposed to get the one the practice and then two the amount of people that I need for certification I'm not good on trusting other people and I'm sorry internet world YouTube whatever oh I'm all of a sudden really stinking really stinking hungry to the point that I feel so nauseated <sighs> I'm sorry you guys <sighs> I hate when I smoke and this happens sometimes I guess I didn't I can't tell my body is hungry um I can't feel my stomach growl or just I don't have no desire to eat but once if I was hungry and I didn't realize I was hungry and then I smoke you know sometimes when you smoke you get desire to eat or you get cravings or whatever whatever you just want to munch on stuff you got the munchies because of the high I get really nauseated to the point that I just am ready to just bring it, nothing that I don't have in my stomach up because I guess I was hungry and didn't acknowledge it and then the weed just woke it up and then it wakes it up with this monster fears like whoosh. you were like whoa I wasn't ready for that that's how I feel right now that's how I feel right now and this is going to be satisfied with water. Bev was asleep. I'm not going to wake her up. I'll never get some more sleep. And my legs haven't been strong enough, honestly. To be standing up. standing up trying to figure out what to do plus if we want to be honest this place looks like who the fuck did it in Raymond like this is another reason why I haven't been on here there's like just so much on my mind and so much on my shoulders and it's frustrating because doing this courses and and, and going through these transitions and these 
<coughs> and these transformations, I've grown and I'm changing and I'm evolving. I forgot to do my 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 affirmations. I came straight over here and just thought about y'all and didn't even think about doing my affirmations or writing my morning pages first. I'm trying to get back on my routine and I'm sorry for just switching the subject again. I'm trying not to do that anymore. <coughs> to the best of my ability. But, um... Ever since this change, depression, or whatever it is, um, has come fruit. I literally stopped all of my routines. That includes posting to you guys and the blog and the podcast and anything else. And it's not that like my desire to live or anything has, you know, heightened. But if we're honest, I'm at the edge. You know? The edge, standing at the edge of the ledge. That's where I am at when it comes to that. But I made a promise to my kid and I'm going to stick to it as best as I can here as long as I can and I'm not using that as an avenue but doesn't mean the thoughts aren't there or doesn't mean that they don't affect me on a day-to-day basis it just means that I've learned to control how much power they have in my mind and I've learned to control the effect so I don't allow it to affect me a certain way anymore. <coughs> but it does not mean that they're quiet. Because every time I'm talking or doing something, they're there. It's constantly like, well, you better they'd be better off without you. What have you done for them this far? You guys live in a rap infested motel. It takes what I'm going through, especially if it's negative, and it uses it full force against me. <coughs> but I've learned to work hard to not allow it to dictate. It did almost one, and being transparent when I say it almost won. And that was when I started the YouTube channel. I was in a bad space. It almost won. It did. Um, YouTube was what I did to save myself. YouTube is what I'm doing to save myself. You know, if someone else can learn from my mistakes, learn from my errors, <coughs> avoid, uh, or even if they see themselves in me and can't figure themselves out, maybe I can give a light to that, you know? But. I had to use YouTube because I couldn't find the support groups. I couldn't find nothing that followed my particular situation. So I became my support for my particular situation. If nobody else is going to rock with me hard, then I have to rock for myself. I mean, if no one else is going to support me, then... (coughs) I have to support myself. Uh, these are all the things that I'm dealing with mentally, which is why I haven't been on here. Um, I kind of feel like I waste my time talking my problems out with you guys. I mean, it's not like I get any interaction back. And as a creator who's being really vulnerable and open and allowing y'all. <coughs> into parts of my life and me that I don't allow people in it just sucks and it just makes you feel like everything you've always felt your whole life where no one gets you and no one understands you is true um or where people have told you you're not worth the space or the time Um, It just validates it as, well, it's true. So, I may have a lot of people watch these videos, 
but there's no love being returned. So how do I know if I'm making an impact? How do I know if my message is getting across? How do I know if I'm helping somebody else? You know, I don't. I assume that I may be. I pray that I do. You know, I'd be hoping that when people cross this channel, even if it's not for them, but they know someone that, you know, they could help, that they'll share it. <coughs> <coughs> It just gets frustrating to open up and have nothing in return. That's how my whole life has been with every relationship. Whether it be a friendship, romantic, work related. I'm always giving, giving, giving. But I'm never receiving anything in return. And that can get very discouraging and very like, ugh. So, it hasn't been helping me with whatever I'm going through now. I haven't been able to kick it off. Like, I haven't been able to, to just get over whatever this is or just cope with it or deal with it. I mean, I'm evolving, so I feel like because I'm evolving, I'm probably just changing the way that I deal with things. Um... I'm on an emotional roller coaster ride that's different than my usual emotional roller coaster rides. Like, I find myself having. I never took my pills last night. Fuck. I find myself having. Um, sorry, you guys. I looked over. I saw the pills, I realized I didn't take my pills last night, and I'm starting to get like a really bad migraine while I'm doing this video, and I think that's what possessed me to look over to the pill bottles, so I lost my whole train of thought, and I, my apologies, I definitely did not mean for that to happen. I don't have none of my psych meds, and she called it in, but for some reason, Rite Aid has not delivered it, and this emotional roller coaster ride that I'm telling y'all about is, is too much for me, and it's different, but it's too much. Man, I shouldn't have drunk that, I don't have nothing in my stomach. What is wrong with me today? You guys were on my mind and it's like my mind just got engulfed for YouTube and I'm doing everything wrong. I'm doing everything wrong. I don't know what's going on, but I need to go back to bed and then wake back up and probably start the day the right way. But yeah, so with everything, like this emotional roller coaster ride is unbearable, like for real, it really is. Like I was okay with the way my emotions were before I, I could uh, catch myself sooner before I had a mental breakdown or a meltdown, whatever you want to call it. Um, I wasn't as sensitive to certain things or I wasn't as open to other people's emotions as much as I am now like which engulfs my emotions and it just even if I'm just watching a movie or reading a book or something I, that person's or that character's emotions like overpower mine and I feel that emotion drastically like and it's just whatever but anyways, um, I knew what to expect and how to deal with it and how to cope, if that makes sense. So, if I was having my bipolar moments and I caught myself, I knew how to just start bringing myself back. If I was having a PTSD trigger and I caught myself, I, you know, worked the steps to get myself back. Um, 
I was in tune more with myself and my body. I felt, I feel. And now, since all these changes and this growth, I can't tell. I'm not in tune with my body the way that I was. And I'm not in tune with my emotions the way that I was. Um, I don't know if that's growth. I don't know if I'm checking out. Like, I don't know what it is. And it's frustrating because I need to figure it out. And every time I try to figure it out, I feel like I just get nowhere. So I was invited to join this app called Wisdom App. And it's supposed to be like Clubhouse in a way. Um, only difference is uh, you are talking <coughs> um, and a person can join you. You can you know accept it or not accept it. They can join you and it's up to 10 minutes. They have to join your conversation each time someone joins and you just have conversations and other people are listening to them um whatever it is you're teaching or whatever the conversation is or whatever the subject is so I did one for the first time which is the only one I've done I still have not been back there for some particular reason every time I'm gonna go on there which I did like the platform I just I don't know I don't do it like I just stop myself um But I was on there talking about, and I did put it to the podcast, the conversation, but I was on there talking about how I don't want to go back. Like, I I had learned my feelings and my emotions. I don't want to do this all over again. I don't want to have to learn them all over again. I don't want to have to go through that process all over again. Um, And then talking to one of the people, the lady that kept joining in, Darlene, I think was her name, um... I realized one thing she did say was right that I wasn't paying I mean I wasn't I hadn't looked at it this way until she said it uh it's growth you know what I'm saying whenever you grow you have to learn things all over again so that you can you know like I say then have your PhD and you and your conditions so every time you evolve and you grow it's gonna change so you're gonna have to go to school all over again and learn it all over again just to have the PhD in you and your emotions your feelings your diagnosis whatever it is even it can be work related it doesn't matter you grow you grow there too you grow there as well you know what I'm saying that's why there's promotions because you grow you evolve into a better employee you know and then you become an employer whatever like whenever you have to learn the process all over again or get better sorry but I hate it when I have something on my keyboard or get better at um at what you're doing and you see that like you have these new tasks new feelings new emotions whatever you're growing you're evolving you have to now fill that role fill that position that you have now opened the door for you're no longer going to be that door that closed. That door is, clo- is done. You did it. You completed it. On to the next chapter. So, I am I have to go through all this, but I'm not liking it because uh, I'm not feeling stressed like I used to. So, I've been able to diminish a lot of my stress. But it's pressure. It's different. It's like... It's a pressure, you know, I have a pressure. I, I know our situation may play a big part in that pressure. You know, I feel like I have to hurry up and find a place to live. I have to hurry up and find transportation, you know, but I'm, I'm in a position where I'm stuck between the sword and the, and the wall. Like my back is, is stuck between the sword and the wall because In order to be able to buy the van, I have to have income more than just the SSI. My SSI still, they have not made a decision. They actually want to try to send me to a doctor. Even though I keep explaining that I cannot get the wheelchair out of here because I don't have a ramp. So how do you expect me to make it to a doctor when my legs are weaker and weaker and it's getting harder and harder to walk? Well, I have to put an appointment for a month from now. You just have to figure out how you're going to get there. 
haven't made it to my own doctor, which I'm trying to, for this particular reason. Uh, and here you are. Whatever. But um, I need more income because of those two bills that I mentioned, uh, the rent and the repo. I don't have enough income to my debt ratio, right? <coughs> Sorry, I guess we'll go with a lot of movies. But, um, I can't work from home because I'm not hardwired here, so I can't go back to my old contract making what I was making, which would have allowed me to buy a van. So, the only other income that I can think of that I can do right now would be grub hugging. I mean, door dashing, both of them, whichever one, doesn't matter because they're the same darn thing, having a count. Um, to do that, I need a transportation, and in order to be able to buy the transportation, I have to have this extra income. I can't get that extra income without the transportation. And if I keep trying to do rentals, like, I have to make sure that I'm making the rental money back, and then whatever's extra, that's my profit. And then it's no guarantee that on the days that I have the car, my leg's gonna be good enough to chill in a car to drive. You know what I'm saying? Like if I have my own car, if I don't feel good that day, I know I got tomorrow. I know I got the next day. I know I'm not, my money's not going to waste. It's not just sitting there. And then the car can make the money for itself to pay the insurance and pay the car by grub hubbing and door dashing. At least I'm making the income. Like my credit score is going up. But now, apparently, that don't matter. Like, just because I have those two things on there, he was like, oh, your credit score is amazing. Before, my credit score was shit. My credit score was shit. My credit score was like 468, I think it was, when I started. And we're like at 6, I think it is, or 590. Somewhere around there. I know I'm almost at six, or I had just made six. I know in one of them, I think I made six, because, you know, there's three credit score companies. But, I've been building my fucking credit, and now, that don't mean shit. Before, that was everything. They didn't give a fuck about nothing else but the fact that my number wasn't right. Now that my number's right, because I got these two shits on there, that apartment, and a car. And I don't have income it's going to be hard for me to rent and it's going to be hard for me to finance so that leaves me in a position where damned if I do and damned if I don't I'm not paying 13,000 to an apartment complex that fucked me over and then I can pay down try to pay down something on a car but I'm not in a financial situation to do that right now I have to wait till I start getting clients in. I have to wait till I start making money in. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only way I'll be able to do that. We're barely making it now. Like, but. It's pressure. It's pressure. It's pressure. It's not stress. It's just like. You have to make this work, uh, even though you're good at it and it's something that you want and you have a passion and a vision for it, it has to work because your whole entire family relies on this. So it's that pressure, that pressure of I cannot fail, that pressure of, pressure of I have to succeed, you know, I have to accomplish this because if I don't, I'm going to be screwed. It's a lot of pressure, and I haven't had a content, I haven't had time to even process myself, you know, and yeah, life is just kicking my behind right now. I just wanted to share that with y'all, plus I was really proud of getting my certificate, and I'm still in need of clients for these free coaching sessions, so I kind of need y'all to please sign up. I will place the link in the comment box again. It was under the other video. 
It's also in the link on my platform if you go to IG, Parenting and Mental Illness, Parenting with Mental Illness, sorry. It's in the link there. You can also find it on Facebook, Parenting and Mental Illness. Um, it shows up with a period at the end. I guess it was a typo. I haven't gone and fixed it. So you may have to put the typo to find it. But um, the link is there as well. I could definitely use y'all support um, so I can get the certificate so that I can keep striving to get my family on our feet. It's not like I'm asking for your money because clearly y'all not willing to help. I'm asking for y'all time. Just give me 45 minutes of your time so I can get these things done for my certification. Like, my future, again, depends on other people. And that sucks. And that's where I was trying to go with the beginning of this video, but everything else in my life happened and the video changed. But the success of my family depends on the people I know and the people I don't know, which is you guys out there. And no one's helping. So, I've, it makes you feel like none of y'all care if we succeed or not. And that's sad. That's very sad. Like, it, it gives me no hope in humanity. At all. Which sucks. It just makes me feel like everyone is just like the woman. And no matter where I go, I'm always going to have the woman in my life because the rest of the world is just like her and I don't want that to be true and I definitely don't want that for my kids but hope one of y'all take me up and offer what you got to lose you're not paying for it I'm giving you a coaching technique that may help you find something that's bothering you or fix something that's bothering you Either way, you get to learn what coaching actually is. And if something that you think you may need in your life, then you have an opportunity to explore it. And if it's something that you may think you need in your life, but I'm not the coach you want to work with, then hey, you know, this is something I want. Let me find somebody that I connect with. But, what does it hurt? I didn't know what coaching could do until I started doing it. I just, just like, oh, okay, they're coaches. Cool. They help people. Awesome. But I never knew what they did or what it involved or what it entitled. And when I was trying to find something, God put it in my heart. I was like, you know what? I think you're right. I'm going to try this. And when I started taking the free course and it really started resonating with me, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to invest in this. This is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest and I'm investing in it. We st I pay it every month. Faithfully. Like, don't have any other extra money. Because I'm investing in our future. Because I, I know that this is what I'm meant to do. You know, I know I'm meant to help other people. And especially, I'm meant to help parents who have mental illness. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm meant to help them and their kids. Um... But I have so much life experience that I know I can help so many people with. Um, when relationships, parenting alone, you know, and parenting kids with disabilities, parenting autistic children. Um, there's so much that I can coach with. Uh, the possibilities are like endless. But if you don't know what coaching is, then how are you going to know it's something that you can benefit from? You're not. You have to take the opportunity to take somebody up. If you don't take me up on my offer, cool. But if you see somebody else offering it, then take it, take them up. Take them up on that free coaching session. Check it out because it has done amazing for me. Like it has done so it has been and done so much for me. It has even evolved my relationship that was going south with my kids. Like just because of the changes that I'm making within myself. And I'm doing it for me. It's not for them. I'm doing it for me. It's my self-love. It's my way of reminding me that I also deserve love. And I also deserve to love myself. That it is okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with me. Just not everybody's cup of tea. And I'm okay with that. 
I've finally been okay with not being everyone's cup of tea. But it just sucks to not have no support. That's different. I'm still struggling with that. I'm still struggling with feeling like I'm not worth anyone's time. And that's why I don't get support no matter what I do. Um, but I know I'm also projecting that into the universe as well. And that, that needs to stop. Because once I start having more faith within me and, and my abilities. And I know I'm worth time. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know I'm worth time at the same time. I don't know I'm worth your time. I know I'm worth my time. I know I'm worth my kids time. I'm just not sure if I'm worth your time. Those are all the flaws in me. You know, and I'm working on them. I'm working on them. I'm getting there slowly, but I'm getting there. I'm, I'm realizing I'm worth much more than I've ever given myself credit for. Which is why I was in relationships that I had no business being in. But if it wasn't for those relationships, I wouldn't have the amazing children that I have today. I had to go through all those battles and all those wounds to have the amazing kids I have today. And if me not being in that relationship meant not having that child, then I don't know how I would feel about that. Because, granted, I probably would have another child, I mean a child with another person, but wouldn't be the child I have now. I wouldn't change neither of them. Because they're amazing the way they are, flaws and all. Flaws and all. I love them just the way they are. And I accept them the way they are. Flaws and all. Stressful as it can be. But I, I, those are my babies. And coaching has helped me realize so much. And I want to pay that forward. You know, I want to pay that forward. Not only am I doing it for my certifications, but I want to pay it forward. I want someone else to feel that amazing feeling. You know, that amazing feeling that they're looking for. That amazing feeling that you want. That amazing feeling that you desire. Why not? I'd feel so much better afterwards because I'm helping. I'm motivating. I'm inspiring. I'm giving hope. I'm giving steps. Like guidance, love. Flaws and all. Flaws and all. Because they're not flaws. They're motivators, they're teachers, they're another part of you. They're what make you so amazing. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But anyways, I done kept y'all long enough. Y'all probably not gonna watch until this part. If y'all did, I hope that my message resonated with you. Um, and I hope you have an amazing day. And don't forget, I can't remember my saying right now. I put pressure on myself and I forgot it. And in the process of forgetting it, I am getting the illest pain right here trying to remember it. My eyes closing more. That's how much the pain is getting. Lord help me. But anyways, I'm just going to end it. Be blessed.